All right, guys, thanks for clicking on this one. I really do appreciate it. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics for what you need gear wise for jigging for striped bass. I'm not going to get into any super detail on the reels and the rods and stuff, but I am going to cover the rod, the reel, and the line in this video. And later on, I'll do some, some more uh, follow up videos where I actually break down the reels individually and show you what I like about the drags and the bearings and all that kind of stuff. But for right now, we're going to cover all the basics on how to get rigged up and ready to go. So you can pretty much go any way you want with jigging. You can start at the very bottom as far as, you know, less expensive gear all the way up to the top. You can kind of go crazy with it, just like anything with fishing. And also you're going to have give and take with everything. So if we're looking at the higher end here, this is a slow pitch jigging rod made by Rich Colson, Head First Rods. This is the absolute highest end you're going to see for a jigging rod. It's meant specifically, this actual uh, model here is meant specifically for the jigging I do with a uh, Ben Parker jig, any of the nickels, lures, uh, spoons from the four inch all the way up to the nine inch. And uh, a couple characteristics of this rod, and it will be the same in all jigging rods really, is the length and the power it is not a very, very stout rod, okay? It is a slow action. It bends almost equally th evenly through the blank, which means it's like a parabolic rod. It bends almost in a perfect C, and that gives you power without the stiff having uh, terrible stiffness okay it has a very long butt to go underneath your armpit has an extra uh, grip here which really sits on the armpit nice and helps keep the reel from from twisting and it is extremely light and extremely balanced and the reason that's one of the reasons it's more expensive is because of the material it's extremely light extremely balanced extremely powerful and it just will not break under normal fishing uh, use. It just won't. I mean, this is probably rated for 50 pound braid. And I had guys on the boat saying, what do you catch panfish with that? And I say, no, actually some of the biggest fish we catch is gonna come on this rod right here. So if you're gonna jig all day long, if you're serious about jigging, I would absolutely order one of these from him or you know, you can get slow pitch jig rod on, online or at the stores, but even the lower end ones I've seen are almost the same price as his, so. I don't know, I would really check him out first. He makes some fantastic stuff and he has not let me down yet. We'll get to the reels in a second here, but staying with rods, let's move down to the lower end. Okay, that's the very high end right there. And on the lower end over here, this is an ugly stick. Okay, this is a 1977 ugly stick. Uh, Tommy actually had this since he was a kid. And we all know ugly sticks, I mean, they just won't break. They are just super, super uh, strong rods. And that's because they're mostly fiberglass. And fiberglass is just so resilient, so flexible that they last forever. Now, they don't have much sensitivity, but we don't really need the sensitivity for jigging because we're using braid. And flexibility is more important than sensitivity when we're jigging, okay? We want that rod to really flex and really bend and be short short rod gives the jig perfect action those little short jerky you know action where the bait looks like it's trying to dart up from the bottom and then is dying dart up from the bottom and is dying it gives you that nice short action and it's nice and short where it won't wear you out a long rod will kick your butt over the course of a day so this rod was probably 22 bucks when it was new and you could probably still find short rods I don't know if ugly still ugly stick still makes a six foot, <laughs> but any rod that's under seven foot that is very very limber is a good rod for jigging. You know you can spend as much or as little as you as you'd like, as long as we have braid for our sensitivity, uh, you can pull it off. All right, a little bit about the reels. Uh, most of these reels are not going to be spinning, but you can use a spinner reel if you really like spinning reels. You can see we've done it plenty of times in the videos, and they work just fine. This is an accurate SR6. They don't make these anymore. Uh, I would recommend a pen slammer. Uh, they're just tried and true. I've had, I've had tons of them. I still have some that are beat to death. They look horrible, but they still work great. It's a uh, around a $200 reel, and the pen battle is a decent reel below that if 200 is a little out of your price range, but that's what I would recommend, the pen uh, battle or the pen slammer. I'll put links to all these in the uh, description there. The line I'm using here, very interesting uh, line. I've been experimenting with line. I like to experiment with stuff because I'm always looking for something that's you know, really good stuff but more affordable. I just like to recommend stuff that people can use and, and I don't like always using the super high-end stuff and I feel like I can't help anybody out by recommending it to them because it's not in everyone's price range and there's a lot of stuff out there that is 
really, really good stuff without spending a crazy amount of money. So I've been experimenting with lines. We'll get the reels here in a minute. But this line here, Reaction Tackle makes it, it's a four strand braid. It's not eight strand, which is one of the reasons it's a little less expensive. And all that really means is it's not gonna be quite as soft, okay? It's still a great line. And for jigging, you don't need it to be super soft. We're using mainly conventional style reels here, bait casters and, and conventional reels. And we don't need a super softness. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna pick this up and not notice the difference because it really isn't that big of a difference. But it's made with four strands instead of eight, so the strands are larger, which means it's not quite as you know delicate and soft. Now, I would not put this on a spinner reel if I'm gonna cast it all day, but you can definitely put it on a spinner reel if you're gonna jig it, and it's great for all these. I'll put a link for this, and it's less than half of a lot of the high-end braids, and I've used it for a year now, and I have no problem recommending it. All right, so from going from our braid to our leader material, Lots and lots of fluorocarbons are good. I've used uh, plenty of them. I use pretty much all the fluorocarbons out there over the years trying to find better options. And this stuff just can't be beat. It's on the higher end, but if you're looking for the absolute best fluorocarbon out there, this AFCO Psycho Pro line is crazy. Now they're all, all the fluorocarbons I've used are good. Uh, pretty much, some of them are kind of crappy, but all of the higher end fluorocarbons are great as far as low vis. The biggest difference you're gonna see here is how soft the line is. It feels more like a mono in your hand and it's not doesn't give you that really nasty coiling effect that other uh, fluorocarbons give you. I'll put some links in here. I don't think Amazon sells this, but I'll put a different link in there straight to AFCO to get this if you want to try it out. It's on the higher end, but it's really, really worth it. Now, you don't need to use fluorocarbon for jigging. If you want, you can use mono. Uh, you can, you know, just you just don't want to go braid straight to your spoon or straight to your jig. Okay, so how much leader are we going to use? Well, in this case here, uh, it's more of a top shot. We're using 20 foot here, 20 to 25 foot. I usually do 20 foot on everything just so I know uh, if I pick up a rod that, you know, a different rod here or there, I know they all have around 20, so I stay with 20 with all of them. And the reason I do that is because 20 foot is a great marker. Uh, I see my knot is at 20 foot, and now I know real quick glance about how much line I have out. So if I just grab the rod, drop it down when I see a fish, and I can kind of feel where the knot is and I have a guesstimate, right? I know where my 20 foot mark is. So that can really, really help me. If I'm down to the braid, I know I'm deeper than 20. If I'm still seeing my, my, my top shot, then I know I'm less than 20. Uh, if you want to adjust that based on your depth, do maybe a 10 foot or 15 foot or 30 foot, whatever. But that's a really cool uh, tip. And I definitely recommend you guys doing it. And it doesn't have to be fluorocarbon. I know it gets expensive when you get you know, 20, 30 foot of it. So you can use mono if you want. Okay, when I'm attaching my top shot, I like to use an FG knot. You can see that sucker there. This knot is probably six months old. I've been pushing these to see how long I can use them. And six hard, hard months. Hundreds, hundreds of fish have been caught on this knot right here. If you haven't seen an FG knot up close, I have a vid video link on how to tie an FG knot. And I'll put it in the description. Actually, I'll put a little... Uh, in the upper corner right up here if you click on that I'll show you how to do the FG knot how I do it okay there's my FG knot hope you guys can see that this one is very very old it's not as old as the first one I just showed you but what's nice about the FG knot if you're unfamiliar with it is it's only a knot on one side so it's really only a knot here it's not a knot where it attaches to the fluorocarbon so there is a knot tied in the braid, but there's no knot tied in the fluorocarbon. Now, why is this good? Well, this is 50 pound fluorocarbon right here. You know how thick that would be if I were to tie that into a knot? That would be a, just a big honking, twisted piece of brittleness that would have to slide through my guides. And if you have a baitcaster reel with tiny micro guides, it's not gonna go through them. So if you want, just hit that next level, you know, where your knots are going to slide through really nice. Learn how to tie the FG. It lasts a long time. And if you're going to use 20 or 30 foot of top shot like this, you can go months and months and months and maybe even a year without ever having to uh, retie it. So, again, I'll put the link in there to learn how to tie it. Learn how to tie it. It's a good knot. If you don't want to use the FG or if you're not comfortable with it, you can use a uni, uni to uni knot, just a double uni. 
and everyone knows how to tie that but i'll put a link in there i don't have a link of myself tying it uh uni to uni but i'll find someone's on there and put it in there in fact here is a uni to uni that is on the spinning setup and you can kind of see the difference now because it's uni to uni i wasn't able to use 40 or 50 pound fluoro here this is just 20 to make it smaller but uh you can see i mean it's a fine knot for up to i'd say 20 i'd say 20 pound fluoro if you're going to go anything heavier than 20, I would use the FG knot so you can slide through the guides or use a very short piece of leader that you're not going to retrieve through the guides. Let's talk about different reels. Now the accurate turn is my reel of choice. It is a star drag. I'm a lever drag type guy, but what accurate did was they made a huge twin drag system inside their star drag so I am using it for my jigging now why do I want a star drag versus a lever drag just for the switch you can hit the switch drop it down and crank it right back up and you don't have to constantly mess with your drag by using your lever drag okay now one reason I like the drag a lot better on this than any other star drag is because accurate invented twin drag now I don't know if you're familiar with this but a star drag reel the drag is on the main gear itself okay whereas a lever drag the drag is on the spool so if you see a big spool reel you can get an idea how big that drag is on a star drag you have a small gear I mean look at this reel here you can see how small that main gear is so that's how small the drag is so what accurate did was they sandwiched the main gear with two drag systems so that's their twin drag system so you see a carbon fiber on washer on one side and on the other with stainless discs that evenly squeeze the main gear for the smoothest drag you're ever going to see. I mean, it is just buttery, buttery smooth. Now, I don't need crazy drag when I'm jigging. I don't use more than four or five pounds of drag usually unless I'm over structure. Uh, but it also means that at the extremely light drag settings, I get extremely sensitive and it doesn't vary. So it doesn't take, you know, two or three pounds to get a five pound drag uh, moving so in other words if I have it set at five pounds of drag I want it to reach five pounds when it pays out I don't want it to have to reach six or seven pounds to uh, get it going you know like a lot of smaller sticky drags are so that's why I like the turn you have a clicker you can I can hand this reel off to someone and just turn the clicker on and I know they won't backlash it I can just say hey put the switch take a thumb off the spool and the way the spoon will take it down to the bottom when it hits the bottom just go ahead and start cranking it's very very simple great reel for that it's not terribly expensive either i'll throw a link in for these as well i like this is a 400 and the smaller one that i showed you earlier in this size is the 300 this is a lever drag like i was talking about a minute ago this is the accurate valiant you'll see us use valiants for uh pretty much everything else but this is a, uh, a 300 size you can see how nice and narrow that is and it's more narrow because it's a lever drag and the drag is on both sides it's twin drag as well and it's a lot more narrow but you can see to engage the reel to set it to free spool you have to move the drag all the way back and then put it back up to where it was so you can see where some people might get confused about where to put the drag back so that's why I really like a drag a star drag with a switch instead of a lever all right moving on to the bait casters a lot of you guys have bait casting reels you can jig fine with these they will have your switch of course you can just engage it and you'll have your star drag here now if you're going to go with one go with one that's good for salt water i don't care if you don't you never see salt water get one that's salt water rated it's going to last a whole lot longer and go with a larger size this is a typical size that guys are going to use for largemouth bass uh, it's a great reel you know, for largemouth bass, but largemouth bass, we're cranking the drag all the way down, so we're not really using it. And usually short amounts of line are going out. You're never really going to push this reel, okay? And of course, it's definitely never going to see salt. Go with a larger size. If you go a larger size, you get a larger spool, so it means it's uh, wider coils in your line, and there's a greater distance between the level wind and the spool, which means your drag is going to pay out better because if you ever looked, and you see your line going through your level wind as the line pays out sometimes the line will be on this side of the spool and your level wind will be all the way on the other and you have that nasty cross up the larger the reel the more forgiving it is so try to go with a larger reel this is a 50 size in the abu this is the beast i love the beast reels if you see the older revo toro the nacis that's the model it's the same i guess the beast kind of took over for these if you see these on ebay snatch them up they're fantastic reels they even got a little clicker in the side 
great, great saltwater reel. Some that's a little less expensive is the same basic reel as that, and they just call this one the Toro S, S for saltwater. It's the same body as this. It weighs almost the same. Uh, the main difference is there are two less bearings. I'm sorry, three less bearings in this one, in this one here, and you're going to get a magnetic control only, where this one has a magnetic control and a centrifuge control or centrifugal brake. Uh, but if you're jigging, you don't really need either of those. So uh, if you're going to get one, uh, I'd rather buy two of these than one of those. In fact, I got this as a pair on eBay for 147 bucks, brand new in the boxes. I got two of them. This one I got on eBay, I think, for about 160 bucks for the for the single one. So uh, look on eBay. I'll put links to the Amazon stuff, but check eBay out, man. You get some great great deals. Lots of the saltwater reels today. They come with multiple handles, and I see a very common mistake online, and I wanted to talk about that real quick. The handle out of the box is this double paddle handle here. That's the handle I usually use, and it will come with these two other ones here. Now, one is for jigging, and one is for casting if you want more power. If you're going to cast, use the one with the counterweight here. If you're going to jig, you can use the single one here and get more leverage, especially if you're buying a high-speed reel and you want a little more leverage, you can go to the furthest uh, hole here. The problem is if you use this one without the counterweight on it and you have this attached, when you, if you do, do decide to cast with it, when you cast, the, your whipping motion will send the handle forward and click, it'll engage the reel and your line will snap and your bait will go flying off. So the whole reason they put this counterweight on there, I know it looks clunky and all that and ugly, but there's a reason for that. It's to keep the handle from flying forward when you do a nice hard cast. So again, out of the box, if you're going to cast a lot, use this. If you're going to cast big heavy baits or if you're going to fight big fish, use this uh, one with the counterweight on it. And if you're just going to be jigging with it, use your power handle. Also, I'll attach my spoons and my jigs with these speed clips here. If you haven't used these before, I highly recommend using them. They're a lot stronger than a snap swivel. Uh, they look a lot better and they last forever. They really do. Until you snag one off and lose one, you'll just keep using it. They don't wear out. You just slide the bait right on, snap it in, slide it right off when you're ready to go, and replace it. You will not lose a bait on these. They will not cut down your sensitivity. They work great, and I highly recommend it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments. I do my best to answer every single one. Please subscribe if you haven't, and give this video a thumbs up. It is a huge boost for me. It really does help me out, so I do appreciate it, guys. I'm going to follow this video up with details on breaking down the reels, and going over the rods in detail, lines, when to use braid, when to use mono, and all that stuff. And so look for those. I appreciate it, guys. Stay safe out there. Love you. Mean it.